Hi, and thank you for tuning into my latest video. This one's a small tutorial, basically, quite a short one, and um, how I sort of get over sort of missing or damaged pads. So the two pads you can see down on the tweezers at the bottom of the screen, they're actually two pads that I've grafted in from another board. They're actually joined under the IC to two tracks that are going elsewhere. And it's all shown in the video how I do it, and it's the same process how I do these for all my sort of pad removals that I graft onto other boards. So them two they were grafted as well from another board, so they're all shown after the video how I do them. You can basically you can graft any pad you want. You can get this off an old scrap PCB. So if, yeah, if you've got any old scrap PCB, it's always worth keeping. And you can even graft this sort of area around here. Um, the main thing is, as long as your tracks are the same thickness, because that's very important, you're good to go. So yeah, it's always worth keeping a few scrap PCBs. And you can actually make invisible fixes. Like no one would really know their sort of, sort of pads that were missing. But like I say, it's all shown in the video. And say so there's pictures after. So hope you enjoy what you see. And if you do, please subscribe and uh, I'll put more videos up. Alright, enjoy the video. Thank you. Right, so welcome to the second part of the video. In this one, I'm literally just going to take, I'm going to remove this bit of track in the pad and this one, I'm going to graft them onto another board, um, which has got two missing pads. I've just like created for this sort of, you know, for this demonstration. So literally I'm going to remove this, remove this, and I'm going to graft them onto another board. And that's another way you can sort of, you know, fix a missing pad. So basically what I do first, I'm just going to score across there two or three times, just lightly. Same place on that one. And then what I do, As you can see, you've got two nice sort of score marks. So two or three times, just go sort of roughly across, one there, one there. And what I do with the silk screen, I just put a little line across there and it helps it to sort of be removed easy. Same with this one. And then I can just get, what I do, I just get under the corner of the pad. This is a scrap board, so it's fine to do this. You can just like lift it up gently, right the way along, until you hit that other end. The resist, if you're careful, the resist and the silk screen should stay on. So literally you can just hold that sort of down on the board and just flatten it. And there you go, you've got a nice sort of piece of tr track with all the resist still there. So now what I'll do, I'll just get this ready for the next board basically that I've prepared. Just scratch that last little bit off. And that'll enable me to just tin that and just sort of solder it to the new one. So I've got that all prepared, just flatten this bit a bit, a little bit more. If you get any stuff on the back, you can easily sort of scrape it off the old glue and uh, any excess little bits of board. So that's that one prepared. So I'll just do the same with this one. So yet again, just get under the corner. Just carefully get under it. They're easy to remove, just got to sort of start it off and it just sort of takes it away from the glue that's on there. You can carefully peel it up without any damage. So that's that one. So now, I'm just going to hold that and just flatten it so it stays in sort of shape. And I can just gently tweak that away. So I've got both board, both fur pads there, sorry. I'm just going to scratch the end of that one off as well. Just to take, you know, just so I can sort of easier do it to the other board when I get to it. Just need a little bit, about sort of half a mil to a mil. That'll give you something to join on the other board. So there's your two pads that can now be transposed onto the board with the missing pads. So what I'll do now, I'll bring that into shot, the other board. I've already prepared this just for the speed of the video, just to sort of speed it up. So as you can see, I've already sort of taken two pads and I've just tinned that just for just to speed this bit, place, the process up really. So what I do now, just take the first one. I can jot jot it into position. But yeah, that's you can always find an old pad or an old track on any sort of scrap boards you can get hold of. So literally just drop that into position there. All I do now, a little bit of flux. And what I do, I go over the joint at that end first, just sort of bridge them over. A little bit of solder. Put it, put the solder on your iron before you do this. So just a little bit of solder on the other end, and you've got a nice little bridge. It's not too high, because I understand you've got an IC body going on there. And obviously you can't have it too high, because the body won't sit flat. So what you do, I'm just going to bring the other pad over, I've just sort of taken off. Same again, just drop that into place. Because I'm using the exact same board that, as a spare, it matches really well, but you can normally find an old sort of track on any board to match, as long as the thickness of the track's the same. So obviously the signal bit that goes down the track sort of needs certain thickness tracks, you know, for a reason. So uh, what I'll do now, just keep that on there. So I'm just going to sort of, a little bit of solder on the iron, same again, just join that up to there. So that's that one perfectly in place. So I'm going to do now, I'll now fit the IC. So this has got to go a certain way around because obviously it's got polarity, so a little bit of flux right along. I like my flux as you probably sort of can tell from the other videos. Now I'm just going to drop the IC on. Now I'll solder that up. And afterwards, it, it, you know, you can see already it's sort of looking good and you can't really tell 
but it's, uh, it's been damaged at all. You've got two of them I had to join on there, you've got to be fairly quick on them. So the heat's going to travel along, you don't want them joints remelting. So I just tin this in place, sorry, tack it in place, a little bit of solder on two of them. Go around them after now, just a little bit more fresh flux on there. So I do now, a little bit of solder, clean behind it. So you just got to go around it gently. around this one, same again, a little bit on this one, same in this one, so just, just that runs around the back really, around the back of the hill, you've just got to be fairly quick on them too, so there you go, from above it looks, you know, you've got eight nice joints, and uh, what I'll do now is give it a quick clean, to show the joints off better, and then you should get an idea of, you know, what you can achieve really, just by doing this method. Now them pads should be rock solid, but if you want, you could put a little bit of tack pack around them. That's uh, what I've used in some of the other videos. It's a little bit of sort of PCB glue that you can... But I don't... With this one, it's pretty solid because the sort of chip's going to hold it down in place. So it should stay perfectly in position. So there you go. You've got all your nice joints. They're the two. You can see the two there that are sort of grafted on. You know, they look exactly the same as the others. Just turn the board around to get a better view, really. So nice and flat to the, sort of to the board. And, uh, you know, looking like all the others, really. So, that's how I do my sort of pad, sort of draft grafting, really. And, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good, as you can see. And so, yeah, hopefully that helps you, and, uh, and good luck. Thank you.